I think it's when there are certain celebrities where they are spreading misinformation or they're misrepresenting the fertility journey so poorly. Celebrities sharing their infertility struggles can be a mixed opportunity for learning. In many ways, it's wonderful to share stories that make our fertility community feel less alone and more connected to others with shared experiences. But sometimes, especially the way information can be portrayed through tabloids and pop media, these struggles are shared with misinformation that often leaves many people confused. In episode nine of season one, we discussed the pros and cons of celebrity infertility news with writer, stand-up comedian, and women's health advocate, Jennifer J. Palumbo, back again here to reflect on the latest in celebrity news with fertility. Welcome, Jay, back to Baby or Bust. Thank you so much. And it's funny, every time now a celebrity talks about fertility, I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm like, oh God. And especially, I think you posted either on Instagram, TikTok, or both when Kourtney Kardashian talked about IVF and menopause. You were like in my head. Like I was thinking about it and boom, you made a video about it like, <laughs> almost immediately. But I was like, oh crap, that was a bad one. Oh my gosh, this whole season of the Kardashians, just every single episode that comes out, the tabloids and news and every single feed is just full of some sort of salacious thing about Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker's IVF journey. And every time, it's almost like I feel like as a fertility doctor, I'm going to have to do damage control. I'm kind of like, oh, my gosh, here we go again. As a reality show, do they have any obligation? I mean, I know she doesn't because she is not a doctor, nor has she played one on TV. But <laughs> as a reality television show, like, do they have to, like, fact check anything they say? Cause, and I, I just tweeted this the other day. I was like, literally almost everything she has said is wrong. I always want to believe the best in people, but I honestly don't know if it's that there's truly a lack of knowledge or it is honestly just saying things that are pretty surprising and shocking in order to hype the show. So the one that you're talking about before the show even started, she talked about how IVF put her in menopause. Right. And oh, my gosh, this is something that I talk to a lot of my patients about. And I literally find myself saying, hey, if we get 12 eggs at your egg retrieval, that does not mean you're going to go through menopause sooner. Like IVF does not put you in menopause. And so as soon as those headlines came out, I was really having to re-explain to a lot of people. And the hard part, too, Jay, is they just sort of put this headline out. But on the show, it doesn't explain anything. Taken out of context and without any education, it just makes IVF sound awful. It's just incorrect. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just completely wrong. There's already a preconceived notion that, you know, whether you donate eggs, like even if you don't go through IVF, but like even egg donors sometimes, from what I understand, you would know better than... I would. But one of the concerns is, you know, will I have any eggs when I want to have my own children? There are genuine concerns, which I understand that you're going to use up all your eggs or you will go into early menopause. So it kind of takes this fear that, you know, is understandable, but then it doesn't really explain it any further. And then you mm -hmm. have a reality star kind of feeding into that fear and making it right. seem like it is in fact a reality. She also said, I think just yesterday then, I think this is why I thought it was 48. She was like, I feel like my doctors bullied me into, did you see this one yesterday? Bullied me into getting IVF. She was like, yeah. things could have happened naturally. And I'm like, you're 40. I'd say I thought she was like over 45, certainly. But that's the other thing is I don't think people understand I don't know who her doctor is. No one's just bullying you to bully you. You really have a low percent of a chance of getting pregnant naturally on your own over a certain age. Plus, you have a higher propensity of having a miscarriage that I don't know if any doctor is, quote unquote, bullying you. They're trying to get you pregnant safely and efficiently, you know, in reducing right. your, your risk of miscarriage. So, again, like all these statements are just coming out and right I don't know if people are really getting the facts. I, I don't know. I, right. As a doctor, I don't know how you don't lose your mind. Something we talked about previously, is it helpful or harmful when celebrities share their fertility story? 
And it's funny, you know, I had mentioned to you privately, but I do think this is worth mentioning now, that I ran into Andy Cohen. <laughs> I love that I say I ran into him, like we were at a bar hanging out. But I ran into Andy Cohen on a train, and I don't usually talk to celebrities because I just, I always feel uncomfortable doing that. I worked at Sesame Street, if you can stand it, and we were like taught never to talk to the celebrities when they're on set, so it's kind of like ingrained in me. But I wanted to to talk to him about the CPSA bill, which is something in New York that legalizes paid gestational surrogacy in New York, because for a while it was illegal, basically in reaction to the Mary Beth Whitehead case, which was a very big case in the 80s in New Jersey. But the reason I mention this is, the reason I was compelled to talk to him about it was a lot of celebrities have worked with surrogates to build their family. A lot of celebrities have dealt with infertility. Very few celebrities have actually gotten involved with advocating for change to help people have access to care, whatever it is. And I thanked him for using his platform to help others. And then I recently actually had the privilege of interviewing Tamron Hall. I was interviewing her about her show, so not about fertility, but and it's funny, her PR people were like, they didn't tell me not to bring up fertility, but they're basically like, that's not what she's supposed to be talking about. But I still brought up fertility. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, just before we you know, get into this interview, thank you so much for talking about IVF on your show. And her and I actually ended up having a whole conversation about it, about the lack of access to care, about how the African community still has a big stigma about seeing a reproductive endocrinologist. So the reason I bring up those two examples is... If there's a celebrity sharing their story and removing the stigma and helping create access to care and helping to advocate, I think in those cases, it's really powerful. Like even when Michelle Obama shared in her story about her pregnancy loss, I believe from what I understand, there was an uptick in African-American women going to fertility doctors being like, oh, okay, this is something that we do do in our community. I think it's when there are certain celebrities where they are spreading misinformation or they're misrepresenting the fertility journey so poorly (laughs) that it kind of sets things back. They're not trying to create access to care. They're not trying to remove the stigma. They're sharing their story, which, I mean, is always appreciated, but then they're doing it so poorly. You know, Paris Hilton comes to mind, bless her heart, And Kourtney Kardashian talking about going to early menopause and kind of giving a false narrative around how easy or not easy it is to get pregnant over the age of, I would say, 38. As a celebrity, you know, there's this push and pull. Like, I love when someone's sharing their story, like you said, and I do believe people are entitled to their privacy. But there's such a glamorizing of, you know, mommyhood and celebrity and Janet Jackson delivering at 51, Hillary Swank announcing recently that she has twins at 48. If you're struggling with infertility, you look at these people and think, oh, my gosh, they're beautiful. They're rich. I guess if you could be rich and famous enough, you can just kind of do whatever you want. It doesn't matter that your eggs are 48 or 51. This can just kind of happen. And there's a lot of damage control that comes out after these stories. Did you see Hillary announce her pregnancy on the morning show recently? Yeah. And it's it's funny. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. I don't know how popular this will be. For some reason... <laughs> Hillary Swank and is it Hilaria Baldwin? She's mm-hmm. very triggering to me. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. You can share she, your feelings. I'm terrible saying that because I'm like, for crying out loud, what does she have, 10 kids now? Oh, <laughs> Jay, I don't know. So you're talking about Hilaria Baldwin and yeah. um, Alec Baldwin's you know, wife. And yes. yeah, she's an influencer. And she, I really appreciated when she shared that she did have a miscarriage. Yes, a pregnancy because you loss. Look Yes. So you look at this person and you think, oh, my God, she's beautiful and she's in shape and she like kind of is projecting this really amazing lifestyle. I'm like, oh, well, if she can have a miscarriage, like I guess like, you know, if it happens to me, it's like, you know, I'm not the only person it happens to. And then even actually she even um, built her family through the help of a a gestational carrier in one case. Something about people who have 10 kids. (laughs) 
<laughs> because I worked so hard to just have one. I mean, I have two now, to be fair. But there's something like the infertility journey in me when I see people having one kid after another. But what about when Hillary Swank announced her twin pregnancy at age 48? Was that helpful or harmful? Well, the thing that upset me about it was, and I think Jennifer Lopez did something similar, when they said something like, it's a miracle, or I prayed. Not that I have any problem with religion, Lord knows, was raised a Roman Catholic. But my concern is there are other people who are praying (laughs) that are maybe not getting their miracle, and Mm -hmm. they may be like, okay, well then God hates me, because (laughs) they've had the help of donor eggs or IVF or who knows, uh, donated embryos or something like some sort of form of fertility treatment. But if they're not disclosing that to the public, then the public may just know, okay, they prayed or they had a miracle. Why don't I have a miracle? And Mm -hmm. when Hillary Swank is saying, oh, you know, twins run in my family, okay, do they? Or <laughs> or was it IVF? Because people are listening and you may be kind of setting a lay person up to a, an unreasonable expectation. Well, I will tell you that as soon as she made that announcement, we got several phone calls at my clinic, you know, of people who were over the age of 45 and kind of wanted to schedule an appointment. And that's wonderful because there are amazing ways to build a family after the age of 45. But patients honestly get angry at me when I sort of say, hey, I don't know how Hillary Swank conceived twins at age 48, but the vast majority of people that are conceiving are using assistance like IVF. And most people you know, in their mid 40s or later, they're using donated egg. I just feel like it's a missed opportunity for education. And People Magazine just came out that very same day with this miracle twins at 48. And the one quote that they put in the really short article was twins run in her family. And so absolutely, as a lay person, you're going to read that and think, oh, my gosh, this is just a miracle. She got pregnant with twins at 48. It's very irresponsible. The thing that drives me, oh God, there's two things that drive me totally nuts. But one of the the biggest ones is when celebrities talk about multiple pregnancy losses and there's no acknowledgement that that's not normal. Like Mm. it's it's come up a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me be clear. I'm not blaming the, the celebrity, not by a long shot, but I feel like there should be some acknowledgement you know, like ACOG says, what is it, if it's more than three pregnancy losses, and ASRM says if it's more than two pregnancy losses, you should see a reproductive endocrinologist about various issues, uterine right. maladies or genetic concerns. But like mm-hmm. you have people like Sharon Stone or Gabrielle Union or, God, there's been so many where they're like, I've had nine pregnancy losses. And then in the article, there's nothing about like, by the way, that's not normal. Right. Like if, it's, if it's one pregnancy loss, not at all to dismiss this whatsoever, that is common. It doesn't make it any easier. But to me, it's shocking that people are like, oh, yeah, she had nine pregnancy losses. And then there's no acknowledgement like, hey, by the way, if, if you've had <laughs> even like five, four, six, like some sort of mention in the article, like something's either wrong with you <laughs> or the embryos. Like I... Anytime I've ever written anything that has had more than two pregnancy losses, I always acknowledge you should see a doctor because something's going on. I do think that you and I read these articles in a little bit of a different way because we both have had our own infertility journeys and we've both done IVF and we're in the sort of advocacy community. So I do think we look at it with a different lens. But yeah, this whole Kardashian season has just been one headline after another. IVF put me in menopause. My doctor told me to drink Travis's sperm four times See, a this week is why to improve I, my fertility. I, it's got to be a male doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but, or, I mean, Jay, or maybe she's making stuff up, right? Because I don't know, like that's a pretty salacious headline to put out there. I did do a TikTok on that and you should 
oh my gosh, some of the comments are just like really inappropriate. No, I believe it. But I was trying to say like, okay, listen, you know, this is not founded in science. I don't know the discussion that she had with her healthcare provider. We need better education so that hopefully people who are reading this will read it and say like, well, that sounds a little cuckoo. Like maybe I'll actually talk to my doctor about that. If you are in the world of fertility, okay, you know about implant and transfer. You know that having more than two or three miscarriages, something's up. You know that IVF doesn't put you into early menopause, all of this jazz. How do we, honest to God, once and for all, get the fertile population at large to understand? Because even, and I told this to someone recently and they thought I was joking, but there's a study out of Australia that backed me up. People don't even realize they have to be ovulating <laughs> to conceive. There's like this study, like oh my gosh. 80% or something yeah. didn't know that they had to be ovulating. We know yeah. how to avoid getting pregnant. And, I, and that's important, Lord knows, especially now, the way things are. But they don't know how to get pregnant still in 2022. The issue is, is that we have to teach this in health class. Right. Like you and I both grew up in the 80s, yep. right? Yep. Sort yep. of yep. like and. So my health class was putting the fear of getting pregnant when you weren't right. ready. And guess what? Contraception works really well. If you don't want to get pregnant and you use contraception the correct way, you will not get pregnant. But that leaves this assumption that when you are ready to get pregnant, it's just going to come easily. Or the assumption that you know, if you are rich enough and famous enough, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can just do IVF in big air quotes and, you know, have your baby. And so it has to come with education. And I have actually educated my kids in their school and with permission from school talked about fertility and how there's this option of egg freezing. And that's one of the reasons why I'm on TikTok, other than it's like silly and fun. But I hope that there are actually some teenage people out there that see this fertility doctor teaching a little bit about fertility because they sure aren't getting it in school. I tell people when you're in your 20s, you should be kind of your most fertile. And with one ovulation and one attempt of intercourse, you have a 25% chance of getting pregnant and having a right, baby. But it, I always tell this when I worked <laughs> at a company called Fertility Authority, at, it was a direct to consumer company. And I would talk to people all day and they would call. And these were not ignorant people they were educated even like like what you're saying about Karen I got calls that I was like holy crap there was one person who was like I don't want to have twins can a doctor put just one sperm in me it's like okay wh where do we oh. start with that like there's a lot there oh. and then this one really sweet couple was like we have been having sex like clockwork every month when she gets her period and she hasn't gotten pregnant and I'm like Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, no, no, that's not when you do it. I mean, like the, all the calls with the questions, it was innocent questions, but just clear misunderstandings on how things work. But yeah. I even actually kind of understood the twins thing. They were like, oh, I guess one sperm means one baby. <laughs> you brought up Michelle Obama, and that is beautiful. I read her book before On Becoming, before the infertility stuff came out and I read about it and like it's in the middle of the book it's only like a couple of paragraphs and I was just like oh my god this is amazing because she's so well respected she's so well educated she's just beautiful she's just I mean this incredible person but oh my gosh this person could struggle with infertility too like I felt almost relieved just reading that so she represented it really well. You talked about Andy Cohen, you know, the producer and involved in a lot of reality shows like Housewives. So he has represented fertility well because he has used his story to help advocate for change and, you know, support in government for learning more. I mean, I mean, I know we're going to go off on a topic here if I go here, but we have to. OK, a lot of celebrities are starting to open up about understanding more about their own pregnancy loss. Right. And this is incredibly important in the overturn of Roe v. Wade. So Chrissy yeah. Teigen coming out and saying, hey, remember last mm -hmm. year when I lost my baby and all of the journals and everything? And when even when I talked about it openly, I talked about it being a miscarriage. 
actually, that was an abortion. Right. Like I had to take action to terminate that pregnancy in order to save my life because I was bleeding to death and needing blood transfusions. As soon as she said that, I mean, as a doctor, I'm like, yes, education is so key. I mean, the first chapter of my book on miscarriage, Not Broken, is all about definitions and how patients get so upset that the word spontaneous abortion is in their medical chart. Well, that is a medical term for miscarriage. And as soon as she came out and said this as a doctor, I was like, oh, this is great. But, oh, here comes Senator Ted Cruz mansplaining mm-hmm. and gaslighting her and saying, oh, you didn't have an abortion. That was a miscarriage. And I'm like, oh, my God, these politicians are making medical decisions I know. and defining things for us. So there is a celebrity that has used her fertility journey and just been out there and been raw about yeah. it. Another celebrity that went out and talked about her loss is um, Laura Prepon from Orange is the New Black. So she, you're on Twitter, so she tweeted, hey, you know, I want to let you know in the setting of what's going on in the country and reproductive rights, I had an abortion. Like I had made a horrible decision, second trimester, you know, multiple fetal anomalies in order to save my life and be able to try again. I had an abortion. Right. That is an amazing use of celebrity. And I think that's the thing that's missed in the infertility world. There are so many examples, including celebrities. They actually want the child. <laughs> like they really do. Abortion affects a lot of people in the infertility world. And Chrissy Teigen is a great example because she has been very open about her infertility journey and she wanted nothing more to have that child. But it's a great example. I mean, and those are great celebrities. Why can't people listen to them more and not, you know, (laughs) people saying incorrect things? It's like you're not helping. And why don't they get fact-checked? Like, why doesn't that get more attention? I don't know. Again, as a writer, like if someone wrote about Kourtney Kardashian saying that her doctor kind of pushed her into getting IVF, you would think from a writer's perspective, not as an infertile, (laughs) I'm thinking, you would be like, well, the ru- the general rule of thumb is if you've been trying for... Y-. You know what I mean? You'd think these writers would at least put some sort of... Like everything I write, certainly because I write for um, Forbes Women, I, I you have to back up everything. But it's the power of content and it's the power of clicks and, um, you know, getting traffic to websites. And one thing that is really harmful sometimes I see celebrities doing is really talking about what they did in order to try to conceive or like lifestyle changes that they're making. Like Kourtney Kardashian talked recently about how she was going to go on a detox and do like spa treatments for a couple of weeks in order to get her eggs healthier. (laughs) And I want to do that too, right? Like (laughs) that sounds great. But just imagine being in the middle of your fertility treatment and sort of seeing this influencer as someone who, you know, probably has access to a lot of good healthcare or maybe health information. Your eggs and thinking. (laughs) But I mean, like, I I know, but I'm saying product that she's invented. Maybe that's what this is a setup for, Jay. Oh my god! Credit cards (gasps) and their own crypto, and like now she's gonna have it. Oh my god! Yes, she'll have a baby, and then she'll say it wasn't from IVF (laughs) because my doctor's awful. It was from a you know any. Oh my gosh! Okay, we need to be kind. We need to, (laughs) but but maybe this is a broad scheme and a setup, and I wouldn't put it past him. There's amazing business women. Beyonce and I had a, <laughs> our first child around the same time. She had blue ivy right around the time I had my older son, Michael. And my mother <laughs> said to me, you know, Beyonce <laughs> dropped all her baby weight. And I'm like, are you are you <gasps> kidding me? No. <laughs> she did. No, she didn't. Like, well, if I had a private chef. <laughs> oh, you my know, I gosh. I was like, you cannot compare me to Beyonce. I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you. But, <laughs> but there's no comparison. <laughs> For crying out loud. But I mean, where's my mac yeah, and cheese? Where's okay. my entourage Thanks, <laughs> to help me get to that goal, for goodness sake? But yeah, I mean, even just, you know, because I cycled in Manhattan, there were people I knew that like were like, oh, I just stopped working. It was just too hard to work. And I don't mean to be dismissive mm-hmm. of that. If you can afford to do that and you felt it helped. But the reality is not everyone can do that. You know, I wish Courtney Kardashian, in addition to going to the spa and drinking sperm and all of that jazz if maybe she could swing <laughs> by 
you know, a California legislator office and say, hey, you know, what about mandated coverage? And, you know, mm-hmm. do some good for other people who are in a similar situation. Like, that would be mm-hmm. so great. You know, I would have so much respect for that. I just think advocating for people who aren't in your position, I mean, oh my God, that's, it's such a, I don't know why anyone wouldn't do that. If you have the time and the resources and you know emotionally, psychologically what it's like to want to have a family or expand your family and you don't have the access to care, why wouldn't you want to help use your platform, you know, to help others? I I just don't get it. Do you think celebrities have a responsibility to share their story in a authentic way? You know, where's that balance between privacy and transparency? It's funny because back in the day, I was like, well, they have every right to their privacy and they shouldn't. Like, I felt very strongly that they shouldn't have to share their story, you know, if they didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> and then, I don't know, as I got older and crustier. <laughs> I was kind of like, well, this is dumb. Like, they should. Like, this is crazy. Because they really are setting people up for unrealistic expectations, and they're doing a disservice. And then I was like, no, they absolutely should. But now I think I'm going back around to everyone has to do what they feel comfortable with and what's right for them. It is so personal. It's so emotional. And I could see if it were me, there are people who don't even want to tell their families they use donor eggs. So it's kind of a lot to ask someone even if they are setting up unreasonable expectations to demand of them, you know, like, hey, you may not feel comfortable telling your family, but you should tell the entire world. You know what I mean? You just, you can't. As much as it would help yeah. people, through all my years of the working with the community, I do have a lot of friends who have used donor embryos or donor eggs or donor sperm, and either their family doesn't know or only their family knows, but friends don't know. Everyone has Mm -hmm. to do what they're comfortable with. And I just don't think you can place that demand on them. I just, I do still respect people like uh, Camille Guadi, who has been very open about using donor eggs and really trying to show that there doesn't have to be a stigma. But again, it's a really hard lesson for people. And she's, she's an actress on Orange is the New Black, right? on prison break. So a different, a different prison. She was in prison. (laughs) Just. Just a <laughs> there are some stars who've open been about open about using donor egg, but then the journalists just say IVF, which is kind of interesting. So even if you're trying to share, sometimes the message still gets you know mixed yeah. up in the way it's portrayed to the public. They are celebrities. They their lives are out there. There's definitely a glorification of getting vulnerable, you know, and isn't fertility and miscarriage like one of the most vulnerable things that people can talk about. So I do think a lot of celebrities are sharing and I do think overall even though a lot of the way it's portrayed and a lot of things that are said are just misinformation you know what at least we're talking about it even if it is Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker and the headline is Botox your ovaries (laughs) or drink semen to be fertile (laughs) then you know at least we're talking about it I think it's adding to some misinformation but at least there's a discussion that there are people no matter how beautiful or how rich or you know, how celebrity that they can struggle to build their family just like everybody else. Yeah. And I I think that's the ultimate goal. Like what I was asking earlier, if we can just reach the fertile public at large, (laughs) that's the big goal and get them to know what's actually true and what's not. Jay, thank you so much. I really appreciate your being here today. And uh, for everybody that wants to find you, where can they find you? I'm going to just say, just visit me on Instagram because everyone judges my me on Instagram. It'll help my career tremendously if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter. J-E-N-N-J-A-Y pal. And don't call me Jenny. I love talking to Jay today. She always has a fresh perspective on celebrity news as a journalist. And I think of it in a different way as a physician. But... 
kind of going through who's responsible for spreading information, you know, whether it's education on fertility, misinformation. Is there responsibility on the celebrity and how they're sharing their story? Is there responsibility for the journalists and kind of how the story is spread? Um, and we can all do better. And part of it is not believing everything that you read, um, asking questions and advocating for your care. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen, and this is Baby or Bust. If you like this episode, let us know. Give us a five-star review and follow the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. Baby or Bust is produced by Mark Ramsey, Jamie Solis, and Greg Moga. Executive produced by Paul Anderson for Workhouse Media. Baby or Bust is a Mark Ramsey Media production. 